In this PowerPoint, we'll begin looking at chemical reactions. In particular, we'll review how to balance chemical equations so they obey the law of conservation of matter. Chemical equations describe chemical reactions. So this is the chemical equation for the combustion of methane gas in the presence of molecular oxygen. So methane has the formula CH4, and our other reactant, or starting material, is molecular, molecular oxygen. In a chemical equation, your reactants, or your starting materials, are always written on the left-hand side of an arrow. The chemical change indicates that bonds are being broken in those reactants, and they're being reformed in different locations to make new products. And the products, the chemical formulas, are always written on the right-hand side of the arrow. Now what's also written in any chemical equation are coefficients. So the coefficients are simply numbers that are written in front of chemical formulas to make sure that the law of conservation of matter is obeyed. As you already know, the law of conservation of matter states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. In the course of a chemical reaction, what this means is that you have to have the same number of atoms of each element that you started with at the end of the reaction as well. In other words, if you start with four atoms of oxygen on the reactant side, you better end with four atoms of oxygen on the product side. Coefficients are placed just to make sure that you end up with the same number of atoms on each side. When you're balancing a chemical equation, the only thing you can do is add a coefficient. You can't change subscripts within a formula to manipulate the number of atoms because that would change the identity of the molecules that are reacting. So the only thing you can do is add a coefficient. So we're going to do some examples and I'm going to give you a few tips along the way for balancing equations. And my first tip is to always write out an atom inventory when you're balancing. So what does that mean? So when you look at a particular equation, the first thing you want to note are what are the elements that are actually interacting here. In this case, this particular equation only has two element symbols present, hydrogen and oxygen. Now they're in different forms on either side of the equation, but it's just those two element symbols. And what I want to make sure is that I end up with the same number of atoms of each of those on each side. So I have to note what I have to begin with. For the left-hand side, my reactants, I have two of each in the molecular forms of those elements. And on the right-hand side, in the water molecule, I have two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen. What I want to do in order to balance this is to get the oxygen up to two or the same number on both sides. And we place coefficients in front of formulas that will multiply through that formula to get the same number of atoms on each side. So if I need to get my uh, oxygen on the product side up to two, I place a two in front of the formula that contains oxygen on the product side that multiplies through by the oxygen. So one times two equals two. Now it's important to remember that the coefficient must multiply by all of the atoms in the formula it's placed before. So you have to adjust everything that changes. So that two means I have two water molecules overall. So each of those water molecules has two atoms of hydrogen, so that also means now that I have two times two, or four atoms of hydrogen, on the right-hand side. I need to now balance my hydrogen. So to get the same number of hydrogen on each side, the easiest thing is going to be to place a two in front of the molecular formula for hydrogen on the left-hand side and that multiplies through, I get two times two equals four atoms of hydrogen. That two coefficient does not affect the oxygen because they're separate formulas, separate molecules. So the coefficients only affect the formula immediately following it. So now I'm balanced because when you have the same number of atoms of each element on each side, the equation is balanced.
So here's our next example. When aluminum metal reacts with oxygen gas, it produces a white powdery compound called aluminum oxide. So we have the formulas for all of those different substances. Aluminum and oxygen are our reactants, written on the left. Aluminum oxide is the product, written on the right. We want to start with an atom inventory. Our two elements are aluminum and oxygen. On the left hand side we have one aluminum, two oxygens. On the right hand side we have two aluminums and three oxygens in that formula. So to balance, it's probably going to be easiest to start with aluminum. So you can see that in order to get the same number on each side, um, it's going to be pretty easy to just put a two in front of the formula for aluminum on the reactants, which multiplies through and gives us two aluminum atoms on the left hand side. So now we're balanced. We move next to the oxygen. And this one's not quite as easy to see what coefficients to place. So a good rule of thumb to figure out coefficients is you want to go for the least common multiple of the number of atoms on each side. So if you have two and three atoms, the least common multiple is going to be six. So place coefficients so you end up with six atoms of oxygen on each side. And what that's going to mean is I place a three in front of O2, it multiplies through and gives me six. And I'll place a 2 in front of Al2O3, and that will multiply through and give me 6 atoms of oxygen again. So the same number each side. Of course, though, placing that 2 in front of Al2O3, that has to multiply by every element in that formula, and aluminum is present there too. So I'm also going to multiply the 2 by the aluminum to give me four atoms of aluminum. And now my aluminum is no longer balanced. So my next tip is always redo the atom inventory after each coefficient. Make sure you adjust every element accordingly and be prepared to change coefficients on elements that you thought were already balanced. So in order to get aluminum balanced now, my least common multiple between two and four is going to be four, and I can change uh, the coefficient on the left-hand side to four in front of the aluminum, and that multiplies through and gives me four atoms on each side. So here's a little more complicated chemical equation, and it's complicated because we have more elements here. Sometimes you just have to write out all those different elements and balance them individually. In certain cases, though, we can simplify our atom inventory a little bit. In particular, if you have polyatomics in your chemical reaction and they do not change from one side to the other. So you've got the same polyatomic grouping on both sides, like SO4 in this particular chemical equation. That's the sulfate polyatomic formula. It doesn't change, it's SO4 on both sides, so we're just going to keep it as a group in our atom inventory. And we'll count the total number of SO4 sulfate ions rather than the individual sulfur and the individual oxygen atoms associated with it. So we'll do our atom inventory. We have two atoms of iron and three of oxygen outside of that sulfate grouping in iron three oxide. We also have two atoms of hydrogen and one sulfate group on the reactant side. On the product side, we have two atoms of iron and three sulfate groups in iron three sulfate. And we have two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen outside of the sulfate group in the water molecule. We'll start balancing with the oxygen outside of the sulfate group. We have three and one. So the easiest thing is going to be to place a three in front of the formula that contains oxygen on the product side. So that's the water molecule. It multiplies through, through by our oxygen. One times three gives us three atoms of oxygen on each side. Of course, it also multiplies through by hydrogen, since that's also in the water formula. 
and it gives us six atoms of hydrogen on the product side. So next we'll try to get the hydrogen balanced and the easiest thing will actually be to multiply the hydrogen on the left by three as well. So we place a three coefficient in front of that formula and that formula is the sulfuric acid formula H2SO4. So we end up with six hydrogens on each side but that three also multiplies by the sulfate group. So one times three gives us three sulfate polyatomics on each side. And now we have the same numbers on each side. This chemical equation is balanced. So here's our last example. There are three elements present here, nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Since there are no polyatomics in this particular equation, uh, we're gonna have to write each of those elements separately and balance them separately. You'll also notice that the oxygen on the product side is actually separated into two different molecules, nitrogen monoxide and water. It's easiest in the atom inventory to keep them separated. So the number of atoms from the first molecule plus the number of atoms from the second molecule, in this case, one plus one. They're gonna be adjusted separately because you place a coefficient in front of the formula so it influences only the oxygens from that formula. So that's why we keep them separate. It's also going to be easiest if you wait until the very end to balance that particular element. So with that in mind, we're going to start with the hydrogen. And we have three on one side, two on the other. So the least common multiple there is six. So we can place a two in front of the formula that contains hydrogen on the left, and it multiplies through and gives us six. Of course, it also multiplies by the nitrogen in that formula. So we've now increased our nitrogen to two. On the right hand side, we can place a three in front of the formula that contains hydrogen, that's the water, and it multiplies through. It's also gonna influence that second oxygen in our formula, so we can multiply that part by three as well. Now, before I try to deal with the oxygen, I'm gonna balance the nitrogen. So I have two on one side, one on the other. I'll place a two in front of the formula on the product side and multiply through. Of course, placing that two is gonna influence the oxygen, the first oxygen. So I'll place that in front of my oxygen in the atom inventory and add together what I've got. Two times one plus one times three gives me five oxygen total on the right-hand side. Now everything else is balanced, so I have to deal with this oxygen. I can see now that I've got two on one side, five on the other. The least common multiple of that is gonna be 10. So that's what I'm gonna to try to get on both sides. On the left-hand side, my reactants, I can simply place a five in front of the molecular formula for oxygen. Five times two gives me 10. On the right hand side, I know that I need to multiply that oxygen by two to give me 10. So I'm gonna multiply both of those coefficients in the equation by two. So that means four times one plus one times six. And I changed my coefficients to match that. And now I have 10 oxygens on both sides. Of course, changing these coefficients also changes the nitrogen and hydrogen. So I have to change the coefficients in my atom inventory to four and six, and that increases my nitrogen to four atoms on the right and hydrogen to 12. And now they're off again. So remember, you have to be ready to go back and change those coefficients, even if you thought they were already balanced. So that means I have to go back and change my coefficients for nitrogen and hydrogen on the left hand side, but luckily they're contained in one formula. So all I have to do is replace that two with a four and it brings everything up to the same number. And now this equation is balanced. So in summary, chemical equations represent chemical changes. Equations must be balanced to obey the law of conservation of matter. And when balancing, coefficients are placed in front of formulas to get the same number of atoms of each element on each side of the equation.